Hello everybody, this is Jacob LZ Gamer Winstead, aka LZ Gamer, here with another replay review sponsored by EvilGeniuses.net. Today we're going to look at a ZVZ, a very, very fresh off the market new strategy that I've been working on, and I'm going to show you guys. Let's jump into it. All right, so here we are. My opponent, TSL Hyun, spawning at the bottom left, and myself, EG LZ Gamer, spawning at the top right. Like I said, this is going to be uh, a brand new build that you guys probably have not seen or have not seen a lot of, depending if you lost to me on ladder or not. Anyways, here we go. Um, right, let me explain kind of what we're going to be seeing a little bit. So this is going to be a kind of two base, all in-ish type of timing attack um, that is only for ZVZ. This is what the, the build is brought around and it's really strong and it's pretty much um, a roach queen timing with uh, you know possibilities for hydra or possibilities for um, any kind of transition into a third later on anything like that but it has it has a lot of uh, viability in the build you can change a lot of things around and be just as, as effective as doing it just one standard way every time you can play very adaptive with this so anyways we see our opponent uh, just building drones, nothing really going on at this point. We're pro probably going to both go for uh, hatch first, fast expansion type build orders. Look at me, I'm saying the good luck, have fun. Does he say it back? Boom. I get the, I get the good old manner from the Korean player, from the SCB life. All right, so we see our opponent actually went for a 1414. 14. Okay, so called that a little off, but that's fine. 1414 is the safest build order you can actually do. Um, it counters cheese builds or it counters um, all-ins or anything like that. So we see that I go straight for a, f a fast expand. Good old 16 hatch, which is my favorite uh, hatch in ZVZ, or even opening in ZVZ. I love hatch first. I, it's, uh, it's by far my favorite to do. I'm not, f not a fan of the 1414 because I feel like it could put me behind more so than not. So nothing really going on at this point. He's got, we're scouting each other with the Overlord. I see that he doesn't have an expansion, so I know what this could mean, right? This could mean, okay, either six Zerglings are about to run down his ramp right now and I'm getting 10 pulled, or uh, he's just went for a safe build. And that's all we see here. He has Zergling speed on the way. He's actually not even making Zerglings, though. Once he saw that I went hatch first, he reacted, which is pretty much what Zerg is all about, is reacting to what your opponent's doing. And so he reacted, it's like, okay, well, if he's going at a fast expand, then I don't need Zerglings right now, uh, because he's gonna be able to hold them off. By the time I get Zerglings to his base, he'll have like six or eight of his, himself. So you know what, I'm just going to make drones, I'm just gonna take uh, I think my own expansion a little bit quicker, and play this as a macro again. Which I like his reaction to, by the way. That's pretty darn smart if you ask me. So because, and look at the damage this did anyways, because I scouted they didn't have an expansion, I still made Zerglings, right? I still made a spine crawler because I didn't know if maybe he sent him around, I missed him somewhere, or anything like that. And I'm just like, well, I don't really know what's, what he's doing, so I'm sending a Zergling out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out a little bit. While this is going, as you note, I don't have a gas. That's that's a neat thing about this build, right? I don't have a gas. I do, however, have two more queens started in production. Um, we're getting those queens out as soon as possible for multiple reasons. One, we can defend uh, cheese builds, right? We can defend any kind of uh, Zergling, Baneling early attack with the spine crawler and four queens. Or we can get them out and start creep spread, which is what we need for this timing attack. Creep spread is really important. So we have our opponent sending three Zerglings at me, doing a little bit of scouting. I have my Zerglings that I did produce, though, just holding position on the ramp. If there's anything I don't want him to see is that I took no gas. And I'm still taking no gas because that's going to make my opponent play even more uh, potentially risky. So here we go. We have our, not risky, greedy. There's the word I'm looking for. All right, so here we have our spine crawler from our opponent. He's even throwing down another. He, he doesn't know what I'm doing and he can't figure it out, right? So he's covering his tracks too. Most people go uh, Baneling Nest or Roach Warren. Well, he's just making a couple extra spine crawlers. He made an extra queen. 
And like I said, that can hold off all ins pretty easily. It's actually shocking how good queens are now after the, uh, the change, the buff, which is pretty much the reason I'm actually doing this build order. So I have my third hatch going down at about 50, about 40 something supply and before my gas. And now I'm gonna take all my gases. That's, that's the note. When you hit 55 supply, grab all, all your gases at the same time. Let's get those going because our, look at our economy. We have perfect economy. Our minerals are mining. They can't even mine better than that. That's just as good as they can go. Still doing some creep spread over here. We don't want to make as many tumors as possible, though. Here's one thing to note. We want to make as few tumors as possible to get there as quickly as possible. So two or three, I would say, is the maximum that you would want for uh, a creep spread timing attack um, because of the fact that we want as much energy on our queens, right? Uh, because we're going to use this, these to transfuse. These are going to be like the Zerg medics of this attack. So I have more queens in production. One, my fifth queen is just about to pop out. I have my sixth queen in, on the way. The first 100 gas goes straight to a lair. So once 100 gas, we go straight to a lair and throw down two evolution chambers, and then we'll throw down our roach warren right after. So the, the roach warren in this game was actually a little bit late. It should have been a little bit faster. So if we look at our opponent, he, uh, he has his lair on the way. He has a roaches, uh, yeah pretty pretty standard stuff. He has a fast third, and that's, that's something that everyone does nowadays in Zerg, Zerg versus Zerg. We see it more and more commonly. Seeing his lair is just completed. I do have my Roach Warren about 60% done. It will finish about the same time as my, my expansion. I have more queens in production. Look at all these queens that I have. How many queens total is this? Let's see. All right, so I have like seven queens at this point. And so now I'm moving them out just got them down here. Could, could, they can snipe overlords, which look at this overseer. Look how, look how good these are at denying. I see this overseer come down, and I'm just like, you know what? No, I'm going to like three shot it. And so, never mind, I four shot it. I was wrong. So I have my one one on the way. I have an idle drone. I don't know why that drone's there, but that shouldn't have been there. And now I'm producing tons of roaches. I don't need to make any more drones. To be honest, I actually have about um, 10 too many. So this would be a great time, you know, with this build, it would be good to take a third because I made so many extra drones. I actually don't need any more drones than, than what I have right now. We see our opponent already has a lot of roaches. He was already planning for like a timing attack that was supposed to come already, but I was doing a much later version. This is more of like a two base macro. This reminds me of like a, how a Protoss will sit back for a long time and build up those immortal sentry counts and then move out with like a doom push or something. That's how I imagine uh, this attack of mine. This is like the Zerg equivalent. So I'm still just injecting my hatcheries. I'm not making a lot of creep tumors as you see. Actually he came down here and I had to cancel these because um, he was going to try to be aggressive but there's no way I, he, that he's going to be aggressive at this point. I just have, I have too much, right? I have enough to hold this off, no problem. I have one attack already done. He has one attack. Oh, never mind. I have one one done now. Just got completed. So we see that my opponent has a lot of drones. He's up to 70. He has plus two attack on the way. He has the infestation pit up. And here comes the trek across the map. Yes, the creep's not ever going to get all the way across the map. It's just not possible by the time you attack. But it can get far enough to make this, this uh, hike much less painful. So we're not just making non-stop roaches. I have extra queens building now. As you see, I had plenty of extra larva that I couldn't spend um, with this build, with the three hatch. But the thing is, I can bring all my queens now and I don't have to worry about um, you know, having to inject constantly or anything like that. So as we see, the queens are just slowly crawling over here. And I don't want to lead in with the queens. Like if you would attack right there, it would have been bad. The ro roaches should always stay ahead. And as we see, we go in. He has a better position, but the queens actually are also attacking, and the transfuse can just keep going off on all these units. So while, yes, these fungals are pretty strong, I keep healing, heal, healing my units pretty nonstop. It actually could even be better. It's something that I'm working on. It's like a totally new mechanic that Zerg just never had to use before. It's just transfuse micro. So with the upgrade advantage, and with the queen damage support, because queens now have longer range than roaches and can attack from behind and add the extra DPS, 
Queens are almost like Hydra 2.0. So he's pulling drones now to try to defend this. He needs more and more meat shields, but with the queens and the roaches and even these extra spine crawlers, it just doesn't matter. It's just not enough. And I just have more and more roaches on the way. And if you look at the money, I could have I took an expansion now for a long time. Uh, I just haven't. And yeah, so obviously things I could have done better this game, but at the end of the day, it's a really strong strategy. That uh, as, you, as we see, like the non-stop reinforcements plus the upgrades are just really paying off. He does have two attack that just got completed, but I'm about to be 2-2 here in about, I don't know, 30 seconds. More transfuses going off of my roaches, healing them up. And yeah, so that is going to probably be it for the for TSL Hyun, just from the economic damage. Look at his drone count, he's down to 44 now. So even if he holds at this point, I could just take a third and be way ahead. If we look at the supply, it's 140 to, to 78. Pretty big difference here. He, he is trying to still win this game. He goes back, he's like, you know, I'll just regroup. But now my 2-2 is completed. Still have uh, tons of units being produced. I have a queen at each hatchery. And yeah, gonna go in, snipe the evolution chamber, which I thought it was upgrading, but apparently it wasn't. I thought I saw the animation for it upgrading, but he wasn't even getting an upgrade. It's just too much stuff. And this will force him to... to... It's coming. I can feel it. It's down to 22 drones now. More and more roaches on the way. Just streaming across the map. I'd finally go take a third for some reason. So late and GG. So yeah, that was that was that. I hope you guys enjoyed the creative style of replays, even in the high levels that uh, that you can actually perform. Um, so thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this replay review. This is Jacob Winstead, aka LZ Gamer from EvilGeniuses.net. Thank you.